All right. So um, my name is Vicki Newcastle Librarian. Thank you for coming to Make Zen Tangle Cartouches with Tamami Galliano with Newcastle Arts Council, City of Newcastle, and for culture. So I'll just do um, a quick little housekeeping. Everybody is muted for this program. We've got a few people in the room, so we'll just keep everybody muted, but you're welcome to leave your cameras on. Um, the, feel free to type any questions you might have into chat. I'll be monitoring that throughout the program and can help facilitate with Tamami if you have questions during the program. She's got a, a nice program designed for us. And uh, I'll only interrupt if it's immediately um, of effect at that time, uh, but we will have time for a little Q&A at the end. So feel free to type your questions in chat or wait till the end and I'll help facilitate that. Um, and that is my housekeeping. So just a quick intro for Tamami. Tamami is a certified Zentangle teacher, a CZT, who currently lives in Tokyo. She's broadcasting from Tokyo today, folks. She enjoys drawing Zentangle art, and her passion is to teach about this amazing art method. Um, when she discovered the world of Zentangle, it was like finding her long lost friend. She started by studying patterns on her own using books and YouTube videos. Uh, she didn't truly understand the magic of Zentangle until she took her first Zentangle class from a local CZT. And this eye-opening experience made her want to share the Zentangle method with others. Uh, she went to Rhode Island to learn directly from Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas, the founders of Zentangle method. It's Tamami's mission to share the joy of Zentangle with as many people as possible. You can find out more about her and upcoming classes that she offers at her website, uh, pebblesanddrops.com. And I'll post all these links into chat as we get along. But uh, with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Tamami. Already, Vicky, uh, thank you for the really nice intro. I feel honored to be here. And yes, I'm teaching this class from Tokyo, Japan at this moment. It is 10.30 a.m. on actually April 21st for me. So I'm ahead of you, like 17 hours ahead of you. But thank you for joining me. And uh, I'm going to, uh, well, since Vicky already gave me a nice interaction, I'm just going to jump right into the program. I'm going to switch my camera so that you can see what we're going to do today. Okay, so this is kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to make today. Of course, yours is going to look different. What I'm going to show you today is going to be slightly different. So just trust me and come along. But the cartouche is just a, just a fancy old word for like ornate frame that you can create around your favorite picture today. So what we're gonna do first is I want you to grab a picture that you're gonna use today. So my samples, I did my, my dogs, unfortunately they are, um, they have passed away, but they are uh, wonderful, wonderful dogs, both of them. So I'm gonna do again with my, some of my picture of my dogs. So the first thing I want you to do is I going to cut out the picture and it doesn't have to be square. Like, like this one I cut around, like according to her shape, you can see. Like if you wanna do square or, you know, straight lines, you can certainly do too. But just cut your picture in a, in a way that makes sense to you. Because perhaps you have a picture that has a lot of background that you don't need, or maybe you have a nice vacation picture of you and your loved ones, but there's somebody on the background that you just don't want to see. So you just, just cut your photo in a way that makes sense to you. So I'm gonna, eh, I'm gonna pick this one today. So going in, not thinking too much. Just Going it in with my scissors. Just like this. And if you have one of those fancy scissors that gives you like you know, 
current edges. That's one, two. Maybe some of you are into scrapbooking, card making. You may have access to a tool other than plain old scissors like I'm doing. So that's the first step you want to do. And if you don't want to cut your picture, you know, if you, your picture is just perfect as it is, just use as it is. So this is a picture that I'm going to use. It's my dog, Leo, wearing a doggle, dog goggle that my friend gave me. Doggle, isn't that cute? <laughs> So once you have your picture, I want, I want you to pick a paper. And your paper has to be, of course, bigger than your picture. And how much bigger? So like this would be too small. But that's only going to give me small amount of space to draw. So you want something maybe at least at least inch on each side at least you can have more space the more space you have the more opportunity you have to add something in this empty space but i think the nice balance is maybe like if, if you can see my picture is about maybe one and a half inch well, almost two inches big and one inch around. So just find a paper or cut your paper in a size that makes sense to you. So that's the first step for today. And then once you have that, you want to secure this picture. So take your glue and glue it on your paper. I'm going pretty quickly, but you can take your time. Just enjoy this moment. And in Zentangle, if you are new to Zentangle, I encourage you to visit zentangle.com website for basic information. But in Zentangle, we have basic eight steps I typically teach at the beginner's class like this. And the eight steps, in this eight steps of the Entangle Method, we always start with gratitude and end with gratitude. So always begin with gratitude and end with gratitude and appreciation. So, I think today it's easy to feel um, feel being grateful, easy to be grateful because you're looking at something that probably makes you feel grateful. Your, your pet or your favorite vacation memories or your family, something probably makes you smile. It's right in front of you, smiling back at you. So. Probably today it's easy to feel uh, feel grateful for whatever is in front of you. So just take a moment as you do this process to remind yourself that we are blessed. We have so much to be grateful for. And with that sense of gratitude, just take few deep breaths before we switch gear and start drawing. So we just use some tools, scissors and glue that you know you can just set aside. All you're gonna need starting from now is a pen. And you can use any color you want. And today I picked green. This is the kind of dark green I'm going to use, but you can certainly do with black or blue or pink, purple, whatever color you like. That's gonna work. 
And if you are having a hard time choosing a color, you're not sure what color to use, the easiest way to pick a color that goes well with the picture you pick is just pick one color from your picture and use that color. Like if your picture has, say, red flower in it somewhere, and you pick a red. Maybe you are wearing a blue shirt and pick blue, and that's going to pull everything together nicely. And if you're not sure, black is always safe. So you can choose black. So pick your favorite pen, favorite color. And I'm using this pen called Sakura Micron. That's probably my favorite pen for drawing. And first step we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to kind of encase this image. What I mean by that is I want you to draw a line, start from somewhere, like mimicking this shape, whatever shape you cut your photo, that's the shape that you are mimicking. Keeping about the same distance from each side. Going nice and slow, taking my time, and also notice that I'm turning my paper as I go so that my hand is always drawing a line in the direction that I feel most comfortable. So just imagine your drawing hand as a sewing machine or sewing machine needle and you're feeding your paper under your hand instead of you turning your hand or you turning your body in an awkward direction. So come all the way around. And I know if your photo is larger, this takes a little longer. But no need to rush. And what we just did around this picture, in the tangle world, we call this aura. We created aura around a shape. So we just aura this shape, right? So I'm telling you this word because I'm gonna probably repeatedly use this word. So when I say aura, it just means you are simply echoing a shape. So if you, for example, if you have a circle, you can create an aura like this. So that's what I mean by aura. Okay, so you had aura and next, thing we're going to do is we're going to attach something to this aura. The shape that we are going to draw is going to look like this. I'm going to do this big so that you can see a little stem. And you have a little kind of seed pot or a little circle. This can be oval or this can be more or less round. This line can be curved this way. So it's just a line and nice pod at the end. So this is what we're going to do around this picture, but not too big, not too big. So watch me first. I'm gonna grow this shape. Go from this line. 
maybe, maybe about this big. And then you notice what I just did was not, so let's say this is the line. I didn't stick this out like this. Kind of went like gradually attached to the initial line. So almost like using this line as a guide, I gradually glue this shape off of this line. So not like this. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And then you add one and perhaps you add another here. Just continue to add all the way around, not too big. And this can go in different directions. And some of them may be longer and bigger than the other. And they don't have to be evenly spaced. Just placing them where it makes sense to you. There's no right or wrong. Just simply repeating this one little shape. And remember to turn your tile. Or more or less in the same height from the this original aura, but if some of them are longer like this, that's fine too. I would say just don't do anything extreme at this point yet. It's gonna work work out if you do something extreme and one is sticking out really far. It's gonna work out, but. If, especially if this is your first time trying. Um, it's probably going to be easier if you just make them about the same height. Not exactly, but about the same height. And if you want to make some of them like crossing as each other like this, that's fine too. You know, there are very organic shape, just gonna go wherever they wanna go. Kind of imagining that you just scattered a bunch of a seed and you, you don't know which one's gonna sprout, how they're gonna sprout. And just let them, let them guide you. Let them go where it wants to go. No overthinking, no over planning. Now, anything we do in Zentangle is no representational shapes. So there's no right or wrong. There's no expectation. You're not drawing anything a particular, just following the steps to create beautiful patterns. So the entangle is a pattern-based art. And some patterns may be a little more complicated than the others. And then when you look at some of the entangle art, you may be like, oh gosh, I'm going to never be able to do that. That's only for somebody who's really talented or whatever, right? We all go through that sort of, you know, kind of self-discouragement, <laughs> I want to call. Like we discourage ourselves from trying by telling ourselves that, oh, that's too hard for me. I, I can totally relate to that, but in Zentangle, the, all the patterns that we are we teach 
is based on these five element, elemental strokes that can be represented with four alphabet. So that's dot in a straight line, and C is curved line, S is wavy line, and O is oval shape. So I know everybody here today can draw or write these four alphabets. So anything I, I do today, you can do it. So that's how easy the Zentangle is. So just keep in mind, it's easy, you can do this. Just have to slow down and be kind to yourself, okay? And in Zentangle, also one more thing to mention is, so this is Zentangle, and I mentioned there is a pattern-based drawing and patterns are called tangle. So when I say tangle, that means pattern. And each tangle has names. So this one you just did, this super easy tangle, has a name called fescue. So you already did one tangle. You already learned one tangle today, if this is your first time. Okay, so once you have enough of these, we're going to aura again. So remember aura is echoing the shape, right? Now, there's a lot of small spaces, right? So what I, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably go in and out like this. So I'm kind of oiling outline. See what I'm doing? Maybe if there's a big space like this, you can go a little deeper if you want. You're trying to encase everything. in a single line. It's almost like putting everything in a shrink wrap. And I'm not creating any new shape. I'm just using these shapes to guide me. So I'm just focusing on looking at each shape. I'm trying to keep the distance from each shape about the same, but it's not going to be exact. Just in and out, taking your time, training your tile. And some parts may look a little wonky because these little fescues are coming in and out, kind of out of control. You didn't really control them. You let them do what they want to do. So that's what you have. If you come all the way around. And then, probably notice there's some uh, spot that has like this V shape or like some, I don't know, can't think of any better way of calling this a V or valley, right? So if you have, if you can see, spot these spaces that goes lower or closer to the picture, what we're going to do is in these spots, we're going to add an orb. You know, here and there. And you're trying to squeeze in 
nice big orbs. And maybe some lines gonna overlap the twine too. Let's just go all the way around finding this V-shaped spot and fill in with orbs first. Perhaps one orbs, two orbs, depending on how big the space is and how comfortable you feel about drawing a big orb. Now keep in mind, I call them orbs. I can even call them pebbles. I didn't call them uh, circles. So I'm not really draw, trying to draw a perfect thing. Just something round, something round. And once you went all the way around, you probably notice like, like I notice here, like a little, little um, V-shaped space, just too, a little too tight to put another orb. I'm just gonna ink in or fill in with the ink. Like here, I have a little gap here, a little gap here. All these gaps that I have, I'm gonna ink in. And this first time around, we just focus on this deep V-shaped spot, right? And once you're done with that, you can also take a look at the entire frame that you have. And if there's any spot that you want to add more orbs, please go ahead and do so. There's no, no really, no rule. You know, if you feel like, oh gosh, I want more orb here, just go ahead and add more orb. Or maybe you want to go all the way around with orbs. You know, everybody's different. Just always remember that you're not trying to copy me. I mean, you're following my guide, but you're not trying to reproduce what I'm doing exactly. We all look different. So, what we do is going to be different. And once you have enough orbs, guess what? We're gonna aura again. Gonna put another aura around. And again, take your time, just mimicking the shape that you have. And you really don't have to think anything. Just echoing this beautiful organic shape that you created. Again, turning the pile. And 
And if you have still a lot of space left, I mean, we're gonna do something else around here, but if you still have a lot of space left, you can repeat this process. You add more fescue, more orbs and aura, and then add more something and aura again. So you can continue to repeat this process. But we're gonna move on with two, two layers today. And again, if you see any, like this sort of place that's going in, like a V shape, this time we're not gonna add orbs, but we're gonna just create a little pool of ink. Now you don't have to do this on every, every corner, but the parts that's little, going a little deep. You can add a little pool of ink. Not a whole lot. Just adding, just adding a little, little accent, a little something to accentuate the parts that's going in a little deep. Maybe yours is really smooth and you don't have this much of sharp V like mine. Everybody's different, okay? So once you have that, let's create um, the border by this time oring the edge, oring the edge of your tie. Um, paper. So you see, I'm just drawing a line that's close to the edge. And my paper has a rounded corner. So my border is going to be rounded. So I'm just mimicking the shape, right? Echoing the shape. I'm not forcing anything. I'm just following what's already there. And you may feel like, oh gosh, my line is not straight. I'm frustrated. But that's okay. When, when you're done, when you're all done, you're not going to even see how each line looks. See, mine is not even straight. That's the beauty of it. Okay, so once you have border, what we're going to do is we're going to add some straight lines. Now watch me what I do. Coming from the border, all the way to the frame. And then I'm gonna skip this part and continue on the other side. And you can do this in any place. And I'm just gonna repeat. Skip. And continue. And I'm going in just very randomly adding some straight lines. Maybe some of them doesn't go through the middle. As in no specific reason why I'm adding next line in this angle. It's very random, so just have fun.
And what we're doing now is called drawing behind. We're drawing these lines behind this uh, area that we created. So you don't see these lines, but you can see that this line actually is continuing behind this shape. And how many lines? Yeah, there's no rule, but just maybe, maybe about this much. Not too, too many, because you don't want each space to be too small. Maybe I'll do one more here. Like this. Very random, very organic. And once you are done with this, what we're going to do is pick one of the shape. Maybe pick one smaller one. It's easier to practice with smaller one. And we're going to go over this line. And as I get closer to the corner, I'm going to round the corner. And you continue to trace over and around the corner and trace over the line. Come back all the way. So it's almost like you're squeezing something really squishy that's into this space. So whatever you're squeezing is um, going to try to push to the corner, but just can't quite get to the corner. That's the kind of feeling you get by doing this. So again, trace the line, cut the corner, round the corner, trace the line, round the corner, and trace the line, and come back all the way. So I'm not just doing this. You see, that's very different. I'm just, this, I just drew corners. But by going over this existing line, it's going to make these lines a little stronger. And it's going to help isolate these nice squishy pebbles. So just don't do the corner. That's that's really cutting the corner, right? No pun intended, but it just you want to trace over and around the corner. So this again is very repetitive, meditative process. You're repeating the same movement over and over again. And as the shape touches to this kind of wonky line, you could just use this as a corner. And come back, just end here. So that's going to create, again, okay, like I can demo here. I'm just going to come out around this corner, but just end here. Pretend like this, this shape is hidden behind. So I am drawing behind in a sense. Because if you can use your imagination to see how this line is going to come here, this line is going to come here. The rounded corner is going to be out here. And that's going to be hidden behind this shape. So you don't have to worry about doing anything. So it's hidden, it's covered up. So don't worry about this complicated line. Just focus on the straight-ish line. Just take your time. Go nice and slow. Because if you rush, you're probably going to 
go off the line and you gonna end it up with multiple lines. And when that happens, that's okay too, but your intention is to trace over the line. That's your intention. So always remember when you do Zentangle or any other art, creative, creative endeavor for that matter, there is no mistake, okay? There is no mistake in Zentangle. But that's a nice thing to strive to stay uh, true to your intention. So I'm not really copying what I'm doing, just really focusing on what's in front of you. And the more you do, the better you get at putting your intention on the paper. It takes practice. So if this is your first time and you feel like, oh, this is not how I want to do. This doesn't look like what she's doing on the screen. That's okay. Again, you're not copying me, you're learning. And when you're learning, just like anything, it takes practice. No matter how easy it looks, it just takes practice. So be kind to yourself. Be patient as you get better. And even just today, in this one hour, you're getting a lot of practice. So you're doing this motion of tracing over and rounding the corner over and over again. So you're going to get better. You see, see how I missed my line too. That's okay. Once you're done all of them, you're not gonna even see the little little oops like this. Enjoy the process. And when you are focused on maybe really tight corners and stuff like that, don't forget to breathe. Don't hold your breath. Make sure you're continuing to breathe nice and steady. Perhaps you notice that your breath is starting to match with the pace so that you move your pen. See how I missed the line again. When I talk, I'm a little distracted. So this line's going to be a little wider. That's okay. And again, continue to turn your tile, always drawing your line in the same comfortable direction. And if you have really, really tiny space that whether you're not, well, you're not sure whether to squeeze a shape in or not, maybe you have a really tiny triangle that you feel like if you trace over and around the corner, you're gonna just destroy or that triangle is gonna disappear. Just just ignore that one, just, just let it be for now. And when you are done with all the other spaces, just come back and look at it again to see if that space would need uh, the tracing over and 
round in the corner or not. I think it's gonna come to you. If you're not sure in any space, just, just let it be for now, for now and come back later. And then once you are done with these lines, you can put a cap to your pen and set aside. And if you're using, if you're doing this with black pen, you know, you can grab graphite and if it was colored pens, you can always use graphite for shading. But if you want to, you can use coloring pencils, maybe like perhaps using some matching colors. I have a bunch of greens, so I'm gonna pick my green coloring pencil for shading today. And just on the back of your paper, just test out whatever you're using to make sure that it works nicely. So not every pencil or every um, materials are going to work in the same way. So the combination of pen, pencil, and paper are kind of important and it's part of your creative journey. And also this is opportunity for you to test out the colors. I have four different greens. And also I can grab a, oh, what is my tip? There you go. I can grab a Q-tip to see if I can smudge this to smooth it out. Some of them works better than the other. So you, if you have a lot of tools, just test out some of them to see which one you want to use. And if you only have graphite pencil, that's fine too. And you can soften this by going over a few times with your Q-tip. And what we're going to do is we want to put nice shading around outside of this area. So I'm going to do maybe with this green. So outside of this aura, I'm going to add a nice shading all the way around and i'm not going really strong whatever you're using don't press down too hard and notice that i'm holding my pencil almost flat that i can see the tip really sharp tip against my line that's important that you're not pressing down like this because you're almost using the side of your pencil and that's gonna help you to add more uh, color onto the paper. And also this is gonna prevent you from put, putting too much pressure on your pencil. Because once you start pressing down too hard, you're actually scratching the surface of paper. Don't want to do that. So I go nice and soft. And if you have a Q-tip, or better yet, if you have one of these things called, this is called a tortillon, blending stump, you can gently go around. Push this graphite or coloring pencil powder onto a paper. So we, we may not see it in this way, but your pencil, your pencil lead, it's just a compressed pigment powder. Well, with other things, but compressed pigment powder. So by going over with something like this or Q-tip or 
or even like with your fingertip, it's gonna act like a powder uh, getting pushed onto the lower creases of paper and it's gonna stay better. So this little, little process you do is gonna so not only soften the look, but also uh, helps this color to stay on the paper longer. So if you like coloring, if you like shading, I, I highly recommend you getting this blending stump. It's fun to use. And I do exactly the same on the initial aura. Initial aura we did around the picture. So I'm only staying on one side of the line, very careful not to cross the line. And I'm gonna stay in here. So in Zentangle, we, we do shade, shade uh, tangles. Oh, speaking of tangles, the, the, the one that we just did has a name too, sorry. That's called and Zeppel is the one, this one we just did together. So that's the name of the tangle. And shading as just a little more, a little more dimension and drama to your drawing. So we're not really trying to do anything complicated. And if you want to treat this as more like a coloring book page and you want to add lots of different colors, that's fun too. And I'm staying with just using green today because I know some of you probably are using just black and white. So I'm just staying with monotone, but you can, you can use multiple colors and use this as more of a coloring book page. And again, we do the same around this aura. We'll add a little more shading, a little more color all the way around. See how this started to have a little more, little more character. It's a very, very simple shading. Nothing complicated. And we're almost done. You know, this is enough. But if you want to, just pick some of the big, these big pebbles and just on. I can do this with black and white. It's easier to see. Maybe like pick a corner and then you add a little bit of sh shading like this. And this can be done with your coloring pencil too. But I'm demoing with black. Just split this nicely to soften this. See how this is gonna add a little bit of texture to these pebbles. You don't have to do this on all of them. That's probably a little too much. So just on maybe two sides around the corner, away from the edges, just add 
a little bit of texture. Maybe color to a couple more. And this is, oh gosh, this makes me so, so happy. And sour on this paper, you can add your little signature as a person who created this beautiful art. And on the back side, or if you're using the sketchbook paper around, I always love to write down the date so today is april 20th for you 21st for me and thank you for handling with me today and i know you may not be done yet but you know exactly what to do it's all repetitive so hope you can continue on this one and hope you, you will continue to create more Zentangle cartouche. This will make a fun gift. And thank you for tangling with me today. And I will get back to Vicky. Oh, Tamami, how wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to Newcastle Arts Council and City of Newcastle and for Culture for providing this class tonight. I'm gonna stop the recording and um, Feel free to pop in any questions you might have for Tamami into the chat.